Most of the time, smaller museums like the Nelson Atkins are on the receiving end of exhibits from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. But this time, things are going the other direction. Mm -hmm. Plains Indians, artists of Earth and Sky, which the Nelson co-created with the Musée de Cape Branley in Paris, there you almost go. got that right, <laughs> is actually going from Kansas City back to the Big Apple. It's an epic exhibition featuring 137 objects that span hundreds of years. And some of them haven't been seen in this country for centuries. The Nelson's curator of American Indian Art Gaylord Torrance is the man who's brought it all together. The first real exhibition of American Indian art that was shown with the intent of presenting it as the great sophisticated art that it is occurred in 1941 at the Museum of Modern Art. It's been only recently that the arts of Native peoples have been recognized much more broadly. One thing that I think distinguishes Plains art is that many of the objects were made by people that had adopted a fully nomadic way of life. So everything had to be portable. I think what makes this painting of the buffalo so important is that this artist was really trying to depict the moment of encounter when he really did see this spirit that came to him. The shield next to it that is so abstract is almost a pure representation of spiritual energy. This horse is remarkable in its elongated abstraction, the beautiful coloration that still exists, but most of all, the depiction of the horse itself in its last moments of life. It's clearly lunging, clearly falling to earth. By the turn of the 20th century, the meaning associated with headdresses became less about war and more about leadership. The many ways a single form, like a headdress or pipe, might change over time is one of the threads that runs through the exhibition. And in the case of this masterwork, also reveals how tricky it can be when pieces have to cross continents. The fish and wildlife laws prohibit travel of golden or bald eagle feathers outside the boundaries of the United States, so nothing with eagle feathers traveled to Europe. So this is, in a sense, the first complete version of this exhibition. There might have been no exhibition had this man, Stefan Martin, been less impressed by the Native American pieces that he saw in the Nelson Atkins permanent collection when he visited a few years back. It was exactly the kind of balance between beauty of the pieces, knowledge about the culture who produced them, and before I met Gaylord, I said, well, that's, that's the man I want to work with. Thanks to French fur traders in the 18th and 19th centuries, Cabron Lee now holds some of the oldest Plains Indians pieces in existence. Long story short, the two institutions agreed to pool their key assets and augment them with the best of the best from museums and collectors across the globe. Artists of Earth and Sky opened in April in Paris to largely glowing reviews. You walked into that installation and just the sweep of the gallery approximated an abstraction of the Great Plains. Here on the edge of the plains, those same objects are being displayed considerably differently, thanks in large part to the sweeping lines and vertical possibilities of Stephen Hall's block building. Exhibitions that travel from different venues but are invested by different designers is like an orchestra playing uh, with different conductors. It's the same score, but different conductors would bring different elements. It's almost like a Shakespearean play. Every player has his moment at the head of the proscenium to do his soliloquy, and then he steps back. What I like here is that there are more chances to walk around the pieces. A lot of those pieces were more frontally presented in Paris, so here you have more chance to see the back of them. I'm looking forward for the, the reaction of the, the people who are connected by their personal history to those pieces. Indeed, Native American color guards and dancers, drummers and musicians helped welcome the exhibition back home. In Paris, the show actually started with works by contemporary artists. In Kansas City, they're not revealed until the end. Most spectacular among them, 
This modern take on a powwow dress that the curators spotted being worn by its maker in 2006. For me, it is definitely an honoring of my grandmothers. Much like my ancestors, culture isn't static, and I put my own interpretations into the work itself, so it's not a, an exact replica, but it's my interpretation of what I think I am. Gaylord Torrance wishes he could have 500 objects to help tell this story, but he's happy with the 137 that have been chosen. It does mean that collectors like Alan Hirschfield will have to get by without some of their favorite pieces for several years. But the former movie and music executive says it's been worth it to see them in such great company. And I think this kind of exhibition that Gaylord has mounted will really change the way people think about these people. If they come in and look at their beautiful work and their cultural beliefs, those pieces really are, in my view, a prayer. And they're a concrete example that we were here. And we were here before uh, Europeans, and we're going to always be here. I want to say that every aspect of this exhibition is being looked at by other scholars, by Native Americans, uh, by other museum professionals. But the goal here was to show really the great continuum over time. And I don't know that that's been done.